welcome to the Temple Sounds YouTube channel. In this episode of Bowl Talk, we will be featuring Tibetan singing bowls in relation to crystal singing bowls and what are the basic differences in sound and structure and visual qualities as well. Okay, first up, we're looking at a crystal bowl in note F. If you notice, the sound is pure and clear and very projecting. It can be struck lightly with different kinds of mallets or spun around like a wine bottle. The quality of the crystal balls is to be very loud and projecting, sometimes forcefully so, so you have to calm them down a bit, especially when in a meditation situation. The tone lasts fairly long. They're frosted on the outside and clear, shiny on the inside, sometimes with designs, sometimes with certain stones and rocks, minerals added like gold, these tend to be quite pricey when you have gold and platinum and silver added to the bowl, but you will be fine with just a basic frosted crystal bowl. And these are also nice in chakra sets, so you can clear all of your chakras using seven different bowls. We have the sharp edge, and they happen to be very tall. A rounded bottom. So you need to seat them on a nice cushion so they don't tip. And if they do tip, they are very, very fragile. So they will break when you're transporting them from place to place. Be very careful. I have a strong case for them. Drum cases work well. Or custom cases built for these particular instruments. You need to be super careful with them when moving because I hear stories on a monthly basis, sometimes even a weekly basis, that the bowls are broken and they need new bowls. These can get quite pricey, so you don't want to take chances with them. Again, they are characterized by a very pure sound. Most are made of glass. Even though they are called crystal bowls, they are made of glass, which is melted crystal, melted sand, put into a mold, and out comes your crystal ball to cool off. The mold is very high temperatures. Okay, moving on to an F note, Tibetan ball. What we have is an antique here made of bronze, which is 80% copper, 20% tin, and the sound is like this. This one was probably made a few hundred years ago. It has a softer sound than the crystal, but more complex and subtler. Just a light tap will do it, and it will ring for maybe a minute, two minutes, sometimes three minutes. These can also be spun like a wine bottle. Or play louder with the leather against the bronze. Or for a softer sound. And the Tibetan singing bowls made of bronze also will play more than one note at, at the same time, which is different than the crystal bowls, which specialize in a strong fundamental and less so in harmonics and subharmonics. 
And these were made by smelting metal, flattening it out, hammering it out, tuning it up, shaping, aging. What you have is this. Now for a comparison in the length of tone. We will play the crystal ball first. If you look at the watch, almost about to hit twelve o'clock. Sure, that's in focus. Okay, we've got a shot of the watch. Watch the second hand. I hit the crystal ball pretty loud. Started at we're at 10 seconds now. 15 seconds and it's starting to die down pretty quick. 20 seconds. Can still hear it, but barely. 25 seconds. It's gone in a little after 25 seconds, maybe 27 seconds, is how long the tone will last on a crystal ball. Now we go for the Tibetan singing bowl. We'll start at the noon. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Twenty seconds. By now the crystal ball has lost its sound and we're at 30 seconds for the Tibetan singing bowl. And this is with a, a, just a medium hit, if that. We're at 45 seconds now. And the sound keeps going. It is diminished, but it keeps going. I, even with my ears, playing drums all these years, I have diminished my hearing somewhat. I can still hear it at 60, 60 seconds quite clearly. Hopefully the microphones are picking this up. We're well over a minute now. Still going, but I have to concentrate a little more to hear it. This bowl will probably ring two minutes if I have it right up to my ear, maybe more. I can still hear it clearly at a minute and a half. Still hear it when I put it up to my ear at almost, right now it is, two minutes. So I'm going to muffle it because it'll keep going. Okay, there you have it, the basic differences between these two instruments. So you know what you're getting. A lot, not a lot of people know these things. They haven't, been, haven't seen or heard the differences, but now hopefully you get a clearer picture, an idea of what the sound qualities are. So when you decide on this or that or both, you can make an informed decision. Okay, that's it for now. Until next time, peace. Have a great day, great week. Take care of yourselves.